Hi and welcome to my video where I'm going to review logarithms. Completely off the bat, I've not prepared anything. Um, we've got a fair bit of stuff to go through, but basically I'm just going to talk about where logarithms come from, and then we'll move in, we'll talk about the log laws. I'm not going to prove to you why they exist and where they come from, but there's a really close link to exponentials that you can go back and look at. Um, but this should really prepare you well for, and here, name dropping a little bit here, for the Queensland Math Methods Unit 3. So we've done some logs in Unit 2, you need to do them again in Unit 3. Because it's in Unit 3, I'm going to use the, the, uh, the natural number E as well. So let's start with what logs are. Uh, so if we start with a function, a standard function, say e to the x equals y, or y equals e to the x, whichever way around, this is an exponential function, and remember that e is approximately equal to 2.718, and just to summarise about e, that's the number such that if you sketch this function and its gradient function, it's actually exactly the same. It's a really special number that occurs naturally like pi. Anyway, we've got this. Now, logarithms have come from this situation. They've come from, um, you know, if we've got a question, say, 2 to the power of 8, uh, 2 to the power of x equals 8, my apologies, well then, we can work out that x equals 3, just using a bit of simple powers and some knowledge that we have about the, um, the two times tables, perhaps. Um, but what about if we have 2 to the power of x equals 7? That's where we have a problem, because 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So it's 2 to the power of something, what? And that's, that's where it gets really hard, and that's where logs come in. So they invented as a way of rearranging this equation to get x as the subject of the equation, so we can solve it. Um, so of course, if I rearrange this, I get x equals log base 2 of 7, um, and then I can, in now, um, I can put that into my calculator. Go back 50 years, I could put that into my log book, and there's a list of all what the logs were equal to. Um, and go back before that, it was very experimental. There were some series in mathematics that can help you estimate values and stuff like that. But for now, you can put in your calculator, so that's good news. Um, anyway, that's how we solve those equations. That's where it came from. So we'll just keep those in the side. But what it means is that if e to the power of x equals y, well then x equals log base e of y. Now I'll stick with log base e today, but of course log base e can be written ln, and you'll see ln on your calculator, so it's ln x, um, but I'll, I'll stick with that notation. Uh, so x equals log base e of y is our log, and it means we can evaluate um, different logs. So just as a reminder about evaluating logs, um, if you had log base 2 of 8, this is saying 2 to the power of what value equals 8? That's what a log is. It's, it's a rearrangement of this question here. 2 to the power of what value equals 8? And that's obviously equal to 3. But we can also use log laws to simplify this. And it's really, in terms of showing you working, it's what you should be doing. So I'm just breaking a couple down, but I'm now going to show you the log laws. Um, let's say we had log base um, 5 of 25 cubed equals something. Okay, we want to evaluate that. And this is a, a different situation. Again, actually using the log laws, there's three or four ways we could probably do this. But for you, it might just be a case of recognising, well, that's equal to log base 5 of 5 squared cubed, which is just equal to log base 5 of 5 to the power of 6. And then you're asking yourself the question, 5 to the power of what equals 5 to the power of 6? Hmm, I think the answer will be 6. Um, so that's how this log simplification can work. But let's talk about the log laws, okay? Now, um, and I'll do this running in line with the exponentials as well. So the first log law is that log base a of 1 is equal to 0. There's a to the power of what equals 1. Now, if we just break this across the exponentials, a to the power of 0 equals 1. That's one of our exponential laws. So some of them look really closely. The second, this is... Number one, this is arbitrary by the way, you can walk into one textbook, they'll have that as number three, another textbook with number five, and another textbook with number one. So I'm just, I'm just naming it, giving it a number. Uh, log base a of a is equal to one. a to the power of one equals a. And this comes from the fact that a to the power of one equals a. So there's our next rule. We'll call this number two. Now this is where it gets a bit more interesting. So our next rule is that log base a of m 
times log base a of n, and by times I mean plus, is equal to log base a of m n. Now this is a little bit linked to this a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m n, but it's a bit harder to show why that works because of this. So I'm not going to go into that today, but this is the important one here. And I'm going to call this number 3 arbitrarily. But if you have two logs added together, then you multiply the values inside the logs. But they have to have the same base, just like with exponentials. This has to be log base A and log base A. It can't be log base 2 and log base 7. That won't work. But then we multiply that on the inside. We get one that's very similar. And actually, just to give you the heads up, it comes from this. A to the power of M divided by A to the power of N is equal to... Oh, so that should be m plus n, my apologies, a to the power of m minus n, and this is what comes in the reverse. a to the power of m minus log base a to the power of n is equal to log base, ah, oh, that's a g, log base a of m over n. So if you subtract two logs with the same base, then you can divide the things inside the logs. Uh, that's four, and then number five, is this one here, which is a little bit simpler. A, I shouldn't really use log A, should I? Let's use X instead. X log base A of M is equal to log base A of M to the power of X. Um, so this is pretty important and actually would have helped us a lot here. X log base A of M equals log base A M X. So if you have a power inside your log, just like we do have here, you can bring that power out as a multiplier at the front, and that works. And again, it comes from power of the power rule, which I'm going to start writing those down, but that's really important as well. And here's the last one, which, to be honest, as a teacher, I haven't actually spoken much about this for the last few years, but now in the new curriculum, you've got a tech free exam. And that is log base a of b is equal to log base x of b over log base x of a. And that's called change of base rule. Now this could be really important because we've spoken in our exponential video about how e is really important. And e is, you know, if we can get to e, that's, that's going to help us out a lot, particularly if we've got a question that involves any rates of change. So for here, if we've got a log base 10, or a log base, you know, 10's in your calculator, at least, log base 26.2, we can change the base so it's log base E of something, and then log base E of something again, which is actually really going to help us out. Um, so it's important to know that we can do that. Um, anyway, they're the log laws, and this is the foundation of logs. And here's a couple of examples, and you'll do some examples in class. Um, that's all I really want to take you through so that you can start getting used to and dealing with those again. Just as a bit of a reminder, um, this is what you're sort of dealing with. So thanks for coming along. All the best.